Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kate's independent media production. Today, we're talking about an elephant in the room that we've never brought up on the show before. It's a trap that any musician, anybody at all really can fall prey to. It's a rough one, but here we go. What we're talking about today is the prevalence of the visual of music being made, the instruments, all of it, supplanting the sound that you're actually hearing. The crux of this issue for us, you know, in the medium that we work in, really is centered around social media these days because a lot of social media is predicated on visuals. So if there's audio in there as well, you see it before you hear it and already your brain's off in that direction. This issue has existed essentially forever. As soon as there was a drum catalog that had a variety of finishes in it, somebody was sitting there ogling it and imagining how those finishes would sound. Coming up through the last hundred years, this industry has embraced this idea and sold an awful lot of people an awful lot of things that they didn't necessarily need, which I'm sure sounded great, but again, we're talking about the idea of the sound you're making. Do you need that drum? Do you need that cymbal? What do you need at all? Where are we now? Where are we today? We're in a world where a person can develop a social media presence based solely on extremes, chops, the way their drums are positioned, whatever it is. Get followers, get industry to back them up with endorsement deals, and then inadvertently become an expert in the field because so many people support them and see them and want them to be the authority, essentially. And never mind the people that use other people's content to devise a scenario where they become an expert and get all the accolades that go along with that. In the end, actually directing where the art form is going because of what they say, because the internet says that they know. Now, if this sounds scary to you as a musician or an engineer, a viewer, wherever you might be, that's because it is. We're freaked out about it here, too. And this is actually the thing that started this channel in the first place years ago. Us at NAM hitting a ton of drums at a booth and going, huh, they all sound like a drum. Why are they making so many different kinds when they all sound pretty much the same? Hmm, this is concerning. Now, this isn't to say that variety is problematic. That's not what we're saying at all. What we're saying is that being informed so you can make decisions about where you put your money and more importantly, your time, that's the big, that's the big item here, is important. And the more that we spend with this content and the further away we get from the sound we're actually making and the music that we're actually making, the more time we lose just straight down the drain that we're never going to get back. It's been said that each of us is largely made up of the five people that we spend the most time with at a given time in our lives. Now, imagine if you as a musician are made up of the five bands you listen to the most, or the five social media channels that you view the most, or the five influencers who have the most influence on your life. Suddenly, this starts to seem a lot more impactful than we might think as we're scrolling absentmindedly. How do we get away from this absentmindedness and back to being able to make good judgments about what we want to do? The truth of the matter is that no matter what platform you're on, whether you're here with us at YouTube or TikTok or wherever you are, all of these platforms are vying for your time because that is their currency. So when you spend that currency, let's start thinking about where we're spending it the same as you would at a drum shop or a cafe or wherever. Having said all that, now where are we going? Where do we want to go next? First thing we're talking about here is 
separating what we hear from what we see. These are mixed medias on social media, essentially all the time, but if we get our wires crossed and start to listen with our eyes and look with our ears, it starts to get very complicated. We can't make smart decisions about anything anymore. In an effort to stave off FOMO and imposter syndrome and just feeling left out of this really fast race that's happening underneath our feet all the time, this leads us to buying things so we can take a photo of them for Instagram or buying things because we feel like we're supposed to. And all of a sudden, purchases feel like an achievement rather than what they are, which is literally just a purchase. Now you have this thing. If it doesn't do something you need, then it's another piece of furniture (laughs) at the end of the day. But on the flip side of that, we do need instruments to make sounds, to make the music we want to make. And there's nothing wrong with a beautiful instrument at all. What we're talking about is informed decisions and making sure that we're not doing it out of a sense of obligation to the hive mind or whatever platform we spend our time on. The closer we can get to judging instruments based on their sound and judging every part of it as well, then we can get much closer to being focused on the music and not getting lost in all of the sort of options that we have. Because suddenly in this world that we're in, they're basically infinite. We could buy a new different snare drum every day of the week for years and never run out of possibilities. But do we actually need all that stuff even if social media or our favorite players say that we do or they have them. We absolutely don't. What we actually need (laughs) is to learn about these instruments, learn how to make sounds that work for us, spend the time to get the experience rather than purchasing something in lieu of an actual achievement that's not actually going to further our art form at all. When we talk about things like a drum or like tuning that drum, we usually start off with the what. What are we doing? We're tuning a drum or maybe we're checking out a new drum. Most people want to hear how we got the sound that we have. We can show them that. We can tell them that very briefly. But the why of it is the portion that is most important. And the more stuff you have around, the less opportunity there is to dive deep on the why of a certain tuning scheme or a drum choice, or even down to, you know, why they compressed it or EQ'd it instead of leaving it alone. Oftentimes, we talk to people in the comments, we talk to people on message boards who would very much like to be a part of this marathon that we're part of, but they would rather just get dropped off at the end. They don't want to do all of the race, they just want the medal at the end. And functionally, that medal is worthless if you don't do the race. And Similarly, if you just buy a new drum to have a new sound, or if you pick a tuning that's not working for you, call it a day, walk away, and don't learn more from that, you're essentially skipping out on the race where you get that experience that results in an achievement such as being able to get a lot of great sounds out of a single drum. Now, if you've been with us for any length of time, you will know that we are definitely teach a man to fish kind of people here. That sounds like a drum. We don't want to hand you the end of the race, even though a enormous portion of social media is ready, willing and able to just go ahead and do that. Ironically, many of them are parroting information that they heard from others on other channels, which may or may not be valid. It may or may not even be what they actually use in their professional careers. This is exactly why we've gone to the trouble of making videos about things like unison tom head tuning versus a different interval. It's not about the right thing. It's about educating ourselves and getting experience so that we can make informed choices, whether it's buying a drum, picking an interval, literally anything. This, what we're discussing today, is what we're going to spend a large portion of this coming season on, which is 
breaking down barriers, shattering expectations, destroying preconceived notions, and overarching myth-busting about everything to do with seeing. Because seeing is deceiving. The more you look at a drum set without hitting it, the less you know about that drum set. Now, to be clear, there's going to be a lot of tuning, there's going to be a lot of comparisons, there's going to be a lot of specific myth-busting experiments, everything you've come to expect from us, but we're going to be diving extra hard into the why. You're going to get the how, you're going to get the what, but this is going to be about the why, because we need to know these things so that we can internalize the possibilities and not just get caught up in the variables and not understand what they can do. So, if you're willing to suspend expectation, open up to the possibilities, we want to take you to a higher place this season on your instrument and also as a musician in general, as a person, as a listener, as an appreciator of music. It's important to us and if you want to give us your time, we will not take that for granted. <laughs>